Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the design and construction, of a morphing wing, micro-vertical axis wind turbine, for optimum performance. A project done, in their final year project, by the students mentioned below. So, let's start. The objective of our project consists of improving the power performance of existing turbine through changing their shape. A criteria adopted nowadays in aircrafts and is known as morphing process. However, since vertical axis wind turbines accept wind from any direction, they are more beneficial than horizontal ones in urban areas. This is why they turned out to be our primary target. Before going any further in our simulation analysis, some parameters need to be clearly defined, since they constitute the basis of the technical aspect of our optimization. CP, CP is the power coefficient, which is the ratio of the electric power generated by the turbine, over the power supposed to be generated by the fluid. TSR, which is the ratio of the blade rotor speed, over the wind speed. The solidity which is a crucial criteria in determining the length of the blade, it happens to be the total rotor area over the swept area. And Y+, plus, which is one of the most important measure while meshing, since it determines whether the mesh is fine enough, and should be actually less than 1. Turbine Selection The first step done in our project is, the turbine selection, that is, the blade and dimensions of the turbine. The blade that we chose, is a NACA 0018, symmetrical airfoil. We chose a three-bladed turbine. A small radius, 7.5 cm, to fit in the water channel, that we're supposed to use for testing. The cord length is 5 cm, and the water speed, imitating the wind, is 0.16 m per second. It is, with no doubt, inconvenient to build the actual design every time we want to test a new design. This is why our analysis has been done on ANSYS. The turbine was drawn as a 2D geometry, since 3D is more time-consuming. An oversized enclosure of the blades has been implemented, since in real life, there's no effect of any walls when the turbine is put in open areas. And rods and other components were neglected for more simplicity. When it comes to meshing, a mesh-independent study has been performed, in order to make sure that the results of our simulations are independent of the mesh quality. Three types of meshes have been performed, starting from poor to medium, and ending with a fine mesh. It turned out that, the error difference between the medium and fine meshes is negligible compared to the time it would take when running the fine mesh. So the medium mesh was adopted. The model, on which the calculations were supposed to be done, was chosen when imitating an existing turbine in one of the reliable articles, and where it turned out that K-Omega SSD gives the closest results. The calculations were done on the basis of 360 calculation per rotation, which means 1 degree per time step. As a first optimization attempt, our target was to fix the blades at an angle of attack, which would give the optimum power. The angle of attack, is actually the angle between the cord length of the blade, and the relative motion of the fluid. After running multiple simulations, from 0 to 15 degrees, with increments of 3 degrees, it turned out that the optimum angle is the 9 degrees, as it can be seen on the graph. So from now on, our further optimization will be based on this fixed angle rather than the conventional zero-degree bladed turbine. The second attempt of optimization was, morphing the blades. The team created a methodology to work on, this methodology will then lead to the optimization of the turbine. Mesh Morpher, an add-in found in ANSYS, was used to perform the morphing. In Mesh Morpher, 
we start always by defining the objective function that we need to optimize. In our case, we tried two functions, the first is maximizing the moment. And the second is, minimizing the drag. Minimizing the drag has also two trials, different in the way the deformation is done, first in the x direction, and second, in the x and y directions. Second, the curve fitting. We start by extracting the shape's coordinates, then, we fit the coordinate intro a polynomial, and finally, we interpolate between the shapes, to get a smooth path, while rotating. Third, we move to dynamic mesh. The team then creates user-defined functions, that are basically C codes, that will be implemented in the simulation, to perform the morphing action. To summarize. The methodology starts with, morphing the blades on ANSYS. Then we take those shapes, and we perform transformation, and curve fitting, on Excel and MATLAB. And finally, we write user-defined functions that will be re-implemented on ANSYS. Since, said earlier, Mesh Morpher gives us the privilege to specify the point on the blade, on which the deformation occurs, and in which direction, several optimization attempts have been made. The first one was based on maximizing the moment, however, on high TSRs, the CP fell below the CP of the normal turbine. A second optimization based on minimizing drag was made but gave the same results. So, the second drag trial was the attempt that succeeded in improving CP. As you can see on the right, focusing on one blade. You can see the tail deforming, while rotating. This simple deformation, lead to the increase in the power. Now. Moving to the manufacturing and prototyping part. The morphing technique consists of, first, partitioning the blade, and, making the part driven through a gearing system. You can see the flaps of the wing moving, in a simulation done on SolidWorks. The first attempt was. After getting the results from the CFD simulations, we agreed on a primary shape to see, to what extent it copes with the profile of the morphed blade. The main problems were, not matching most of the morphed blade's profile, and second, higher friction and aerodynamic components. The second attempt. The final design was done after getting the finalized result from the computational fluids dynamic team. The contour of the morphed blade was coped with the current morphing technique and design. The aerodynamic friction will be reduced due to the continuity of the new design. The new design of the flaps, ensured, a continuity in the surface, and a full match. The newly designed turbine consists of a main shaft, and a body sized to be mounted on the water channel. The parts, including the blades, were machined and 3D printed. We can see a sample of a 3D printed blade in the pictures. Now, moving to the instrumentation and control. The prototype uses servos to control the position of the blades. An encoder, mounted on top of the turbine. Speed is controlled by electromagnetic brake and a torque sensor mounted to the shaft. These actuators and sensors, are programmed via National Instruments MyRio. You can see in the video, a basic prototype, displaying the gears, blades, and actuators. Since the experiment hasn't been accomplished, we did a rough estimation of the power losses, consisting of the servo losses. It turned out that after running it, about 3 milliwatt was consumed by the servos, 
whereas the optimized turbine was supposed to generate 0.4 watt, and the normal one 0.313 watt so a total of 27% in the turbine power has been accomplished. Now, this project isn't done yet. It needs further work, and the team started working on few of them. First, a 3D simulation should be done, to validate simulation. We already started simulating, and we are getting good results. We even simulated a different turbine, under different conditions, and got an increase in the power. We even simulated a turbine, and compared it to tested results, and the data perfectly matched. That confirms the validity of the simulations. Next, we need to do some reverse engineering. We need to take the design of the flapping wing, re-simulate this design and conclude its drawbacks. Then after that, re-prototype and validate the results once again. To conclude, we were able to increase the efficiency of a vertical axis wind turbine by morphing its blades while rotating. And we designed the deforming blades that are ready to be tested. Thank you for your time. You can always contact the team members for any further details.